Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lisa Elvin Stoltari, and I'm a genealogist and a passionate traveler. For the last several years, I've been focusing on Les Filles Marie and Les Filles du Roi, getting to know these remarkable ladies, really one-on-one. -on -one. So we are going to do episode number 65. I can't believe we're there already. But before we begin, let me show you ways you can support the channel. The first three keep you in the know. Subscribe, like, and notify. The next are ways that you can help the channel grow. We have and Patreon, which are standalone platforms. We also have my PayPal button on the U on my website, Have Roots Will Travel, where you can donate. And we also have a super thanks now. YouTube channel. All of those are amazing ways to show your support. Appreciate any and all of you who have done so thus far. Really, really touches my heart. Thank you so much. Let's get started, shall we? Alifia Marie came to us between 1634 and 1662. They are the original Fijoa, if you want, but they are the founding grandmothers of Quebec. In these stories, you're going to find the very essence of Nouvelle-France at the very, very beginning. And when these women came, they came to a wilderness in many respects, a land that was yet to be formed. And they were the ones, the true pioneers, who helped, I would say, birth what is now modern-day Quebec. So we owe them an extraordinary depth of gratitude. But the problem with Lethia Marie is it wasn't an organized program. These ladies would come one or two at a time over a 28-year period. And obviously, that averages out. There was about 262 of them. And that averages out to about um, 10 a year. And that is nowhere near enough to found a true colony. And this is when the king stepped in in 1663 and said, okay, we got to get this going. And that is when Lethia de Roi came along. So let's have a look at our fee and Marie of this episode. Today's episode, number 65, is a lady named Marie Chapelier. And she comes to us from a viewer request. And when I looked in my files, I saw that my best friend also has her as a great grandma. Let's get to know Marie a little bit better. Born in 1625 in the region of France known as Ile de France, which is basically Paris and all its surrounding suburbs. And her département is not actually in Paris, it's kind of in that sleepy suburb, saint Emerne, and her commune is called, it's a fascinating name, Brie Comte Robert. And it's on, it's found on the edge of the plain of Brie and was formerly the capital of the Brie Française. Brie comes from the Gaul name meaning plateau and the Comte Robert was Robert I of the Gaul, who owned the town and was a brother of the King Louis VII. So that's kind of the history of it all. She, her parents were Jean Chapelier and Marguerite Dodi. She actually was married while in France. And she was, she became the widow of Pierre Petit. Here you can see the church where she presumably would have been baptized and married. And this is one of the castles. It's just a historic, a wonderful, wonderful little town. Marie would come to New France in 1649 at the age of 24 after losing both her husband and father. The groom that she would select, his name, Robert Drouet, and he was born in 1607 in a small commune called Le Pin la Garenne. And in that is found in the region of France known as Normandy. And inside of Normandy, the département is Orne, and it has about 626 people that still remain and live there. And I've shown you the little sign as you enter the town. The Church of St. Barthélemy dates from the 11th century. And this house on the, on the left of your screen is the actual Drouet house that remains. This is where Robert um, was born. Uh, in, I'm not sure if he's born in that, that house, but this is where he lived with his parents, Robert Drouet and Marie Dubois. Now, Robert would come to New France extremely early on. He was a master brickmaker. And in July of uh, 1636, 
at Robert E. Fowle's house and drawn up in the presence of a notary, he married Anne Cloutier, and it is the oldest marriage contract preserved in the original in Canada. And so this is the very first family that he would create with Anne. So he would establish himself. This um, He was a true pioneer. And this one that I've circled here, it says, Cap de Puy Québec jusqu'au Cap de Tourmente, 1641. And that's the land that he lived on. So just amazing, amazing, a true pioneer. Anne would pass away and he would take as his second wife, Marie Chapelier, on November 29th, 1649. The family would settle at Beaupas, which means beautiful port. Let's talk a little bit about this beautiful slice of Quebec. In 1634, Robert Giffard, Robert Giffard, received the Seigneury of Beauport from the Compagnie des Sans Associés, which is the company of 100 associates. It kind of like was a very small little land, if you will, little town, and it kind of really mushroomed around the 1700s when about 400 French colonists settled just east of Riviere Beaupas, and they were attracted by the flour mill that was there and the agricultural land. So after the seven, into the 17th century is when Beaupas kind of really came into its own. You can see on the map as well that it's north of Quebec City as well, and this is kind of how the land was divvied up. We see the family at Beaupas. We have 1666 census. We have Robert and Marie. Now, notice there's a Geneviève and a Jeanne, and then there's a six-year gap between Geneviève and Nicolas. Geneviève and Jeanne are from his first family. Nicolas is his family with Marie. Now, we have Pierre. We have Marguerite. We have Etienne. We have Catherine. We have Jean-Baptiste. Now, in the 1667 census, Geneviève and Jeanne are gone. They're presumably married. And then we have Nicolas, Marguerite, Etienne, Catherine, Jean-Baptiste. They have six beasts and about 10 arpents which is about eight acres of land. Marie and Robert would have a total of eight children. We have first Marie, who never showed up on any census, because she would marry Nicolas Lebel at the then legal age of 12, but sadly drowned at age 13 without leaving any descendants. Nicolas would marry Marie Nognon and have 15 children, nine of whom would make it to adulthood. Pierre would pass away at the age of 14. Marguerite would marry Jean Gagnon and have eight children, seven of whom made it to adulthood. She then married Antoine d'Arne and would have two more children, both of whom made it to adulthood. Etienne would marry Catherine Gagnon and have 11 children, nine of whom would make it to adulthood. Then we have Catherine, who would marry Michel Rouleau and have six children, four of whom would make it to adulthood. She would then marry Guillaume Simon and have 10 children, seven of whom would make it to adulthood. And then we have Jean-Baptiste, who we believe died before the 1681 census. And we have Marie Madeleine, who would pass away sometime between the, um, before the 1666 census as well. And then we have 1681 census. We have Robert, who for some reason has now um, gotten younger, <laughs> and he's now listed as 40. Obviously, he was more like 80. Marie Chapelier, who is now 60. Etienne, the final son living at home, is 27. And then we have two guns, six batacons, which are go anything with a horn. So it could be goats, it could be a bull, anything that you could imagine with a horn is what they were counting. And they have at that point 20 alpavala, which is about 18 acres of land. Robert Drouet was buried June 1st, 1685, at almost 78 years of age. He and Marie would have been married 35 years. Marie would live on for another 12 years, not remarrying, but presumably surrounded by her family. She would leave us on the 18th of March, 1697, but she would leave us with 311 descendants by 1729, a remarkable feat. Now you can see that Marie would die at the Hôtel Dieu 
and Ramal died um, in Bupa, and he's buried there. As anyone who studies French Canadian genealogy knows, the Drouet reports and all of that, yes, it is true. He is the ancestor of the gentleman who began um, the genealogist back in the early 19th century who created um, all of the records and, and all of that. And that family worked tirelessly to give us so much of the information that we have. Now, in our French Canadian volume two, we have a lovely biography, a short biography of Robert Duane. You can find that on our free French Canadian Ancestors Facebook page. Join up and you can have access to One of the things that is featured in the book um, our French Canadian ancestors is often what other names would Drouet be known as? So I want you to pay particular attention if you have any possibility that you might have a Robert Drouet in your tree. We have Boucher, De Rouet, De Rouet, De Rouet, De Rouet, Droit, Drouet, Drouet, and Drouet. Drouet might be an English version. So you never know how it's going to, so you've got to pay attention um to how a name might have been changed and as befits such a remarkable family we have l'association des drouets les familles drouets um and i provided the link for you so you can have a look if this is your descendancy you absolutely want to check it out as always i love to provide the resources that will permit you to further explore your tree and when you look at up there, the Genealogie du Québec et d'Amérique Française, I've posted the link. It's actually nosorigines.com. And you can have it translated in English as well, so don't uh, don't be afraid of it. And it really is a remarkable resource. It's completely free. Check it out. There's Every now and then there's a little bit of errors, but not too many. So definitely check that free resource out to get you kind of started on some genealogy. What a remarkable life Marie led. I mean, to have been widowed and come to New France. And remember, she was from the outskirts of Paris and she comes to this new land out in the middle of nowhere and marries a widow with children already and merges her life with his, produces more children and really is one of the founding mothers of this area and obviously was a very, very prominent part of the Drouet legacy. So we want to thank Marie for her endurance, her, her incredible tenacity and ability to be flexible and to just keep going on and on, you know, no matter what happened. So we are grateful that she came to our shores and we bless her memory. I also want to say thank you to my patrons and supporters. Your support and um, just overall enthusiasm for my little project really warms my heart each and every time. So I do appreciate patrons, supporters, subscribers. All of you contribute to the success that is becoming Hamroots Will Travel. Thank you ever so much. And with that, I will see you on episode 66 of Les Diamaries. Au revoir.